Okay, we're going to spend a lot of time in this chapter three talking about the zeros of a polynomial. And so let's talk first about what are the zeros of a polynomial. Well, the zeros are solutions to the equation p of x equals zero. These are also the x-intercepts because we remember that x-intercepts always have a y coefficient of zero, which is what this equation is referring to. So let's talk about this for a minute. Let's talk about the function f of x equals x minus 2 times x plus 3. Now this is a quadratic equation, so we'll remember from previous classes that we can solve 0 equals x minus 2 times x plus 3. And we do that by realizing that if these two things multiply together equals 0, that means either the first thing equals zero or the second thing equals zero. In other words, we know that if this whole product equals zero, that means x minus two equals zero or x plus three equals zero, which means that x equals two or x equals negative three. And sure enough, if I graph this guy real quick, If I graph x minus 2 times x plus 3, what do I, where do I find my x-intercepts? Well, I find them right there at negative 3, 0, and at 2, 0. Okay, that is not a coincidence. That is how this works every time. So let's try this on a larger function. So let's let's take a look at the function f of x equals x to the third times x minus 3 squared times x plus 2 times x squared plus 1. Now if I want to find the zeros I would first need to put my polynomial in factored form, and we'll learn how to do that as we move through this chapter. This one is already in factored form, so what this really means is I want to solve 0 equals x to the third times x minus 3 squared times x plus 2 times x squared plus 1 which means x to the third equals zero, or x minus three squared equals zero, or x plus two equals zero, or x squared plus one equals zero. Okay, so each of these gives me a number, so the solution of that one is x equals 0. Now x minus 3 squared equals 0 when x equals 3. x plus 2 equals 0 when x equals negative 2. And x squared plus 1, there is no real solution to that. So we're going to ignore that one for now. Now, so... Each of these gives us a zero. My zeros are zero, three, and negative two. And those are also my x-intercepts. Zero, zero, three, zero, and negative two, zero are my x-intercepts. 
So let's take a look at this graph. So I want to graph y equals x to the third times x minus 3 squared times x plus 2 times x squared plus 1. Okay. And I think, according to the work I just did, that I should have an x-intercept at negative 2, 0, at 0, 0, and at 3, 0. And I do. But notice something here. These, these, these zeros look a little different from one another. So here at negative 2, if we just focus in on where the graph of that function crosses the x-axis, in the near vicinity of that crossing point, that really kind of looks like a straight line, doesn't it? Now, in this case, it looks like a vertical line, but it, it could easily be slanted, too. Interesting. Look, that guy. In the vicinity of zero, well, that kind of looks like x to the third, doesn't it? Kind of does. And what does this look like? Well, this kind of sort of looks like a quadratic. Okay, interesting. So let's take a look at our equation again. So where did this negative 2 crossing point come from? Well, that came from this graph right here or this zero right here, that guy has an exponent of one. The y, the x variable in a linear equation has an exponent of one. Let's take a look at this zero at three. That guy came from here with an exponent of two. That would make a quadratic if we graphed it, wouldn't it? And in fact, oh, looky, the zero crossing came from this cubic. Interesting. So that's not an accident either. These exponents give what's called the multiplicity of my zeros. So this thing has a zero. So we're going to talk about the zeros and what's called their multiplicity. And the multiplicity is the exponent applied to the factor associated with that zero. So this thing has a zero at x equals zero with multiplicity. 3 because this factor that gives rise to this 0 has an exponent of 3. It has a 0 at x equals 3 with multiplicity. Two, because the factor that gives rise to the zero of x equals three has an exponent of two. And a zero at x equals negative two with multiplicity one. And remember, in the vicinity of the zero at zero, this thing kind of looked like a cubic. And in the vicinity of x equals three, this thing kind of looked like a quadratic. And in the vicinity of negative two, it looked like a straight line. Okay.
if so the graph of a polynomial will cross the x-axis at zeros with odd multiplicity. And will touch but not cross. So it, they touch and turn around, kind of bounce off. at zeros with even multiplicity. Okay. So we need to keep this in mind because later we're going to look at graphs and construct an equation that might give us, that will give us that same graph. All right, I hope you found this helpful.